Good morning folks, down the workshop today. Uh, I got done with uh, 17 lures that I've been working on during past weeks and months. So I'd like to display them. First a few words of uh, explanation about all of these hard baits. And after I go upstairs and test them in the top. So I'm now going to give you some close shots of all of these 17 hard baits. All right. Okay. Here's a big uh, lured left turn from Meranti, red Meranti, six inches body length. Uh, has a self-centering line tie, 1.5 millimeter aluminium sheet lip. The lip is pinned with three uh, 1.5 millimeter wire pins, and the lure is balanced with uh, six lead balls, uh, seven millimeter diameter that I've beat flat to fit in a bore underneath the rear screw eye. The screw eyes here are big musky screw eyes, two inches long. This one is one and a half inch long. Painted with uh, model, uh, with acrylic paints and a mo mottled uh, pattern. Deep diver. Okay. Here we've got a crankbait with a screw on lip of 1.5 millimeter aluminium ship sheet painted with acrylics in a rainbow trout pattern. This lure is, uh, well, hmm? six and a half inches carved from Apache wood. Has a couple of lead weights embedded into the belly. P and kit style screw on lip. All has been, uh, all screws are epoxied. Also has a self-centering line tie. Here is a um, five inch deep diver of Abachi wood. Also in a mottled paint pattern. Has some lead ballast here. One special thing about this is that it has the line tied to the body, not to the lip. I've learned this from uh, Australian style lures. If the lip is pointed and triangular like this, um, it might not require the line tie to be located on the lip. So I shall see whether this one would perform. Uh, if my memory serves me well, I've tried this one in a blank condition before. I'm gonna see whether it would swim and not overturn. Uh -oh. <coughs> Here is a nudie from cedar, red cedar. This one does not have any ballast because I didn't want to spoil the... Uh, Nudie looks with weight holds, has a big uh, deep diving lip of 1.5 millimeter aluminium sh uh, sheet with a self-centering line tie. So no weight, uh, no added ballast. I know I might sacrifice some of the uh, possible diving depth, but uh, it's just for the looks. So I'm eager to see whether this one would perform. Okay. Here's a little glide bait, tapered towards the front end, which is actually the tail end because it's a reverse running minnow. Weights are embedded here and there. So I'm gonna see whether this one would uh, come up with the gliding action. It's not that large, it's just a bit more than four inches long. Also made of a batchy wood. Okay, caused a little mess here. Alright. It's another minnow bait, 
of Abachi wood. Scratching seven inches. Also has a screw on lip, self-centering line tie and a few lead shot of ballast embedded about here. Yep. Another Abachi lure vintage style banana with a screw on uh, lip of one millimeter aluminium sheet has a little ballast here to stabilize the action. Here's the assembly of the rear spinner. All those painted with acrylic paints. For vintage style I've uh, utilized uh, such uh, washers or grommets for a better look. Okay. Mm. I gotta stop this now. Okay, back again. Just drop one lure, I had to pick it up. Here's a little plug. This one only is uh, scratching three inches long, turned from a bachi wood. After typical salmon plugs, does not have any added ballast. And here's another one of the same style but larger. This one is, has been turned from a somewhat heavier wood. I've tried both of these lures in a blank condition. And as far as I remember, the smaller one performed well. But the bigger one tends to overturn when jerked too hard. And I guess this is because this... Uh, wood of this one lacks buoyancy. Um, the line tie and belly hook hanger consists of a, a paper clip wire form leading through a bore leading this way and cast in with epoxy glue. Whereas the rear hook hanger is a kind of a cotter pin running through a bore from the rear up here and the tag ends have been bent back inside of a groove on the back of the lure and all filled up with epoxy glue and worked flush after curing. These lures do not wiggle but they swim somehow in a zigzag pattern. You would see later on the top how they swim. Okay. Here's one of Abachi also with a screw on lip that I assume to be a reject. At least the blank tests did not satisfy me. Um, I had to put the cross section of this lure is over. So I had to embed ballast into the belly to have it swim upright. But the wiggle is very poor. Probably I could use it uh, in a jerking manner. I shall see. It was just an experiment. Won't do such shape again, I suppose. Okay, here's another one of a bachi wood. Has some ballast embedded right here. Though not required, it, the blanks swam well without ballast. Also uh, has a aluminium lip of 1.5 millimeter thickness painted with acrylics and a mottled pattern kind of a banana lure it is a uh, four and a half inches about okay a deep diver abachi wood Uh, length without lip, scratching six inches. Has a V-shaped belly. Some weight embedded into the rear to counterbalance the lip. Through wire harness glued in into a slot, leading all along the lure body. Uh, I just glued in latch sheets together with the internal wire form.
another Apache lure. This one is now uh, five and a quarter inch, something like that, and some kind of a fire tiger pattern. Also through wired, and again the lead ballast has been glued into the uh, central wire slot. I do not make such lures from two halves. After carving the shape, I would uh, use uh, such a, a cutting wheel with my Dremel to furnish a belly slot so I can glue in the central wire harness plus a lead sheet weight. Okay. Here's a little crankbait deep diver of a basswood. Actually this one has been turned on the left and uh, afterwards cut away the, this back portion and the flanks in the rear to, have, to get this irregular shape. Also through wired with an internal wire form and the entire length of the lure has been filled up with lead sheet. I mean the slot has been filled up with lead sheet for ballast. Haven't tested this one before. Lip consists of 1.5 millimeter Lexan. A shallow diver uh, also sporting a through wire harness. Here as well the entire slot has been filled up with ballast. 3 mm Lexan lip, length is uh, 7 inches, a bit more. I like the way this one turned out. Uh, painted with acrylic uh, paints. I'm using a wet and wet technique, so I would uh, apply different colors at one time, so they would blend on the lure before getting dry. Uh, I think with such acrylic paints I have more painting options than with uh, model making animals. They just blend better. You know I do not use airbrush. I paint them all by hand brushes. <coughs> Here is a left turn one from a broomstick. Also with a screw on lip. Screw eyes. Has some uh, ballast but not not a lot. It swam well without ballast if my memory serves me right. So if they, if my lures do swim quite well without ballast, I just add a little ballast to stabilize the action. And finally, a deep diver with a 3 mm Lexan lip. But this one is made of PVC hard foam. Here are also the painting techniques of wet and wet, all brush painted, body length, four and a half inches. Okay, so I'm going to go up the bathtub now to test them for action. Okay, thanks. Okay, people, at the bathtub, first I've tied on the little reverse running glide bait. Okay things tail down, a little floor, probably I should use a heavier leader, but as it seems, it comes up with a gliding action, with gentle taps, oh it does overturn, yeah, when jerked too hard it overturns, but with gentle flicks from the wrist, it should be okay. I'm not 100% satisfied with it, but I've got to try it in the outdoors. Such gliders are always very hard to test on the top because simply you lack the space and you don't have the right uh, action with this little ice rod I'm using for my testing. Okay, 
Now the big deep diver swim slightly head down. Yeah, that's why I put the ballast into the rear. No, it, it swims almost level. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, very strong wiggle. Also, the bathtub is too small for this big lure. Oh, uh, has a very nice action. Hopefully, the uh, all the lab balls in the rear that I've beat flat to fit inside would uh, cause the lure to cast very well, despite its heavy lip. Well, it doesn't seem to overturn. Hundred percent satisfied with this one. I'm going to use it in fall season. Okay. Now this vintage style lure. Banana lure. Has a nice action. Maybe I can change the camera a bit. For a better view. Okay. moderate wiggle but it's okay of course any attachment to a crankbait like a grubs tail or in this case a spinner would dampen the action of a wobbling lure well that's all right suppose this one would dive down a max to three feet maybe only two okay now this one, that I assume to be a reject, yeah, hardly wiggled, just somewhat trembles. Now, I have to try it in the outdoors. very tight wiggle it has but also as it seems a hunting action I to stabilize it I could have placed more belly weight but that would have dampened the wiggle even more so uh, not very satisfied with this one but I'll give it a try in the outdoors okay here the little banana Very nice action this one has. Doesn't blow out at faster paces. Very nice. Typical banana action. I love this one. Would also not go deeper than uh, three feet. I think even less than that. Very nice. Uh, Let's start from the other end of the top. I've lined them all up on the rim of the top here, the uh, rainbow trout. Soft, soft bubble. Hmm. This one might blow out on a jerk. Very soft action this one has. Flanks from one side to the other. But at a low frequency. Not what I prefer. But definitely I'm all gonna give them a chance. Okay, I'm just thinking now. Right, now, uh, 
This one with the pointed lip and the line tie and body. Oh yeah, nice. Tight wiggle. But look, of course all lures would require toe eye tuning. Oh, that's fine. But the lip could not have been any larger than that. Then the lure would blow out. Oh, I'm fine with this one. Um, here's the last turn one. Hmm, the lip is a bit too large, maybe. It has a tendency to hunt. Well, as it seems also requires toy tuning, it's pulling to one side. Oh, but well, that's fine. Moderate wiggle and roll. Well, that's nice. I'm okay with that, but I see that it leans to one side. It requires toy tuning. Um, I can't get this thing. Yeah. Okay, now the other minnow lure also has this kind of a soft roll like the rainbow trout, but this one has a higher frequency. Doesn't seem to blow out. I guess you could fish them in a jerk and course manner. Hmm. It's okay. Though I'm not uh, the biggest fan of such action, what you never know. Okay. That's it. Now the big red cedar nudie. Forgot to tell you in the display that this one, the lip has been pinned with three uh, wire pins as well. You see it's swimming a bit head down. It could have used some ballast in the rear, but as I said, I do not want to, did not want to spoil the looks of this lure. Oh man, this is a wobble, bathtub is too small for it, it would wake up that tight, as it seems it does not blow out as well, uh, this one would go down 15 feet I'm sure, and it, not that much of remaining buoyancy anyway, could have used just a little rear ballast. Oh, very nice. I'm satisfied with this one. Australian style nudie deep diver. Okay, now the one in fire tiger pattern. Oh, has a strong roll. They always write pipe like such a flanking action, such a roll. This one won't go deep as well, maybe three, four feet, I suppose. Nice one, I like it. And now the PVC hard foam deep diver. Haven't tested this one before in the blank condition. Oh wow. It's a crash diver. Very nervous wiggle this one has. High frequency. Probably it would hunt. A crash diver. Crash diver is a lure that digs down very steep. 
Now this one would go 20 feet or more. Very nice. This uh, PVC hard foam stuff is really buoyant so you, you can fix real big and heavy lips to it without having them uh, t uh, nose heavy too much provided they've got counter ballast in the tail. Here's this one, shallow diver. Yeah, that, that's the best of all of these big minnows. Has the flanking action, but has a higher frequency. Oh, this one is nice. I intend to use it in a certain swim, the Alster Lake in Hamburg, which is very shallow. But as it seems, this one will not go deeper than two feet. Very nice blue, I like it. Also the way the paint job turned out. Okay. Now the deep diver with the V-shaped belly. Yeah, nice action. Bathtub is too small for it. This one would go down 15 feet as well. Yeah. Very nice. I found such over long over lips are always uh, more likely to turn out to uh, work well rather than uh, such lips here. So during past times I've uh, assembled such lips to quite a few lures. They might not dig down as deep, but the lures are more reliable to work with such lips and they also provide a bit of a more moderate wiggle. So, uh, and I think uh, Pike prefers such minor action during fall season for deep divers. Okay, here's the small left turned crankbait. It's a very lively action this one has. Yeah, when at a faster pace it stops the wobble sometimes. Well, it's nice. That's a 15 feet candidate as well. As small as it is. And still is uh, buoyant enough to pop off obstacles. Okay. Now the uh, version of a salmon plug of the heavier wood. You see? The bathtub is too small for it. It does not wiggle. But it has a, a kind of a zigzag course. You cannot see this in the top. But you see, if I retrieve it fast, that would blow out. This is uh, because the wood lacks buoyancy. Let's say if the wood would be more buoyant, if the lure leans onto its side, the buoyancy would tend to push it back to course. But because this lure is not that buoyant, it... Uh, flips over and comes out. So, I have to see in the outdoors whether I, I, it could coax a strike, otherwise it would be a reject. I should have used Apache wood for it as well. But instead I've used the heavier broomstick to make it. So here's the small one, salmon plug version of Apache wood. And you see, this one has a very nice action. It does blow out as well, but not as much, and has a very lively zigzag course. Without wiggling too much, what I get that this one could coax a strike of perch or even trout, the way that it swims. I guess I'm going to make more of these. I like the action, something different. 
Alright, that was my bathtub test and lure display. Thanks a lot for your interest. Goodbye.